everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to share with you how I plan my week. So some of you have been asking about this related to various topics like when it comes to uh, planning my ferments and meals and different kinds of things. So I wanted to just do a video where I talk about how I plan my whole week, how those things fit into it as well as other things. And so let's jump in and I'm going to start talking about it. And for those of you who have been with me for any length of time, you may have noticed that the this part of the update is done and I am so excited about it. So for each week, I have a little document type of thing on my notes app, so it's shared between my phone and computer, but I don't love to be tied to a device like a phone all the time for productivity and time management type things. I really like paper, so I will just print off this weekly list. I have like a little template thing that I'll show you, and so I just print it off every week and then I just fill it in with everything that I need for that week. So when it comes to planning meals, I've shared some about this in previous videos, but I take kind of a loose approach to this. I don't sit down and write in detail what every meal is gonna be for the week. Instead, I go and I take meat out of the freezer. I usually will take about six or so days worth of meat out of the freezer, so I'll take a variety of things out things that will defrost more quickly, things that take a number of days to defrost, and then I will work from that. I love taking meat out of the freezer in a big batch like this because it helps me choose different cuts of meat in a wide variety from the animal. So like we get a whole beef, a whole lamb, a whole pig, and so then I find that I'm more easily using up a variety of cuts, the bones, the organ meats on a regular basis instead of just going out there for one cut of meat at a time and then kind of forgetting the holistic picture and then tending to grab one cut and then neglect other ones. It just helps me get kind of a big picture, make sure I'm using a wide variety of those each time. So I'll pull those out of the freezer, put them into my outside refrigerator, and then throughout the week I will try to keep in mind a bit of a variety. I don't want to have like three ground beef meals in a row for example. So I'll take out things that sound good for that day and then so I'll decide what cut of meat we're having that day and then I'll think what do we have that I need to use up that's in season that sounds good with this cut of meat and I love doing it this way because it keeps it a little bit more relaxed. It enables me to easily use up what we have on hand. It keeps it more seasonal so that I'm using things that are available right then and I just I find that it works really well. I like it a lot. So that's what I do for meal planning, take out my cuts of meat and then each day decide, okay, we're gonna do a roast today. I'm gonna do some carrots with it, some onion, some potatoes. We're gonna drink the meat stock, cook it in water so that you get meat stock because it's a bone in roast and there's my meal. Or maybe the next day is gonna be meatballs and we're gonna do some rice with that. We're going to do some sauteed vegetables like green beans on the side. Uh, fermented food along with it, sauerkraut, and there's my dinner for that night. So I'll just go along, okay, maybe this time we're, I have ribs that I pulled out. Let's start those early in the day. I will make some barbecue sauce to go with those a little bit later. I'll make a plan in my mind later on when it's almost time to eat or maybe earlier if I wanna let it sit for a while. I'll shred up some carrots, do some homemade coleslaw dressing with that and we'll have that as a side, maybe fry some potatoes as well, that kind of thing. So it just keeps me using up stuff that we have and I shared in another video my favorite sources for groceries and so we get like a weekly produce box so that kind of gives me my produce that I have for the week and so I'll just pull from that as I'm deciding what to make each day and so that's how I do meal planning. Now I know that there are people who like a very detailed laid out meal plan of what you're having for each day and I do have some of those. I have a GAPS meal plan, a 30 day GAPS meal plan. I also have a four week wise traditions or nursing traditions style meal plan. I also have a more transitional one that goes over three months. So I'll have links to all those meal plans down below. They're great for anybody who likes, like I said, a more detailed meal plan or just some new ideas. So a couple of them are pretty new. So be sure and check out those links to those meal plans if that's something that you're interested in. I also work into my weekly routine, my cleaning. So I have a few 
tasks that I try to make happen every single week. And then instead of leaving deep cleaning items for like spring and fall only, instead I have a list of those that I keep and then I try to tackle one item from that list every week. So that keeps it less overwhelming than, okay, here's spring, what's everything that needs to be cleaned? It just keeps it a lot more doable and less overwhelming if I just tackle one thing at a time on a regular basis. And I find that it keeps things in better shape in the long run too. And then laundry, I have Monday as my laundry day, so I try to get everything washed on Monday. Sometimes I'll get it folded and put away that same day, but oftentimes that takes me maybe into the next day or the day after that to get to that, and I'm okay with that. I'm all about being relaxed about these things, having kind of loose goals of when stuff needs to happen, but if something comes up, I don't stress about it or worry about it. For our family, our priorities are time spent with each other, especially being present with our kids, and making sure that those kinds of things happen first and then fitting in the other things around them. So in my weekly template that I print off every week, I fill in something for each day. So like laundry Monday, cleaning I try to do on Tuesday, and then for the next days, I leave those blanks so that I can fill in what I want to make sure happens on those days. Then I have things that need to happen every weekday, like things that I help my kids with, their music practice, those kinds of things. And then for every day, I try to make sure that we tidy everything, pick everything up to some degree. It's, it's never perfect, but we try to do some of that and then also make sure that we get outdoors every day. I also have a section where I focus on nutrients. So I have a few little nutrients that I always want to just write down to make sure that I'm keeping that in my mind that we're getting. So I have fat, B vitamins, so that's going to be like organ meats, things that have B vitamins in them, egg yolks, and then minerals. So I just write those on there, make sure that I'm making sure we're getting those on a regular basis each week. And then I have a little charity section. So I think, is there anybody who needs something like somebody who maybe just had a baby or was in the hospital who might need a meal or help in some way. So that just reminds me to think about that if there's something that I could do this week as far as that goes. And then I have a little section that I call could do. So in there I put, if I'm going about my day and I think, hey, I need to remember to do this instead of just hoping that I remember to do it when I have the chance, I go over to my list, I write it down, and then I go back to whatever I was doing. So I don't have to try to keep it in my mind, it just makes it a lot easier. So then when I find myself with some extra time where I'm like, hey, I could get some extra things done, then I go to my list and then I can start getting a few of those things done. So I've been loving that idea. And then I have a section in my weekly tasks and events list for events that happen. So I just put some jot down what needs to happen. So like music lessons on this day at this time, any appointments that we need to keep, what day, what time they are, just so that I make sure that I have those there so they don't get forgotten. And then I have a section for my business. So my blog and YouTube channel and GAPS coaching business. So I will have a little rotation of different things that I need to make sure happen with this every single week. So for example, one week, I will need to film videos like I am right now, and another week I will need to schedule to get those up onto YouTube. I need to create the video thumbnails. I have to schedule what's gonna be going out on Instagram and to my email subscribers. I take some time on every so often to plan what videos I'm going to make, what blog posts I'm going to make, and make sure that the people who help me with all of these things have what they need. And then I have things that happen every single week, like going live in my membership, responding to people that are in my membership and my GAPS coaching package, those kinds of things that need to happen every week, every day, depending on what they are. So I have all those things written down. And I know some people have been curious. If you are curious about my YouTube channel and blog and the Etsy shop that I've had, I am putting together something that takes people through the process that I use to build and grow these things. I've really loved having the opportunity to have a YouTube channel and a blog. And for anybody who's interested, I am working on putting together something that goes through the process of what I did to build and grow a YouTube channel and a blog for anybody who might be interested in looking into something like that as well. It is such a fun opportunity. It's like I get to make content, I get to do recipe videos, I get to make things, I get to talk about things that I love. It's like such a fun job if you want to call it that because it's, it's fun. It's what I love. It's built around my passion. 
It also brings in an, an income. And I've just been really thankful for the opportunity. I wanna share it with anybody else who wants to build something like that for themselves as well. I also love it because it enables me to do what I love, like I said, uh, stay home with my kids and have an income and the time spent on it these days is very minimal I spent a little bit more time when I was building everything up But these days I pretty much just work on things during my kids nap time and then I have you know It's very minimal time spent. I'm just so so thankful and I want to share this kind of thing with you guys too or anybody who is interested in doing something like this as well so if anybody is interested in it stay tuned as soon as I have it ready I will have links to what I'm creating down in the description box so be sure and check those out if you're interested so that's kind of like a broad overview of how I plan my week so I will go into specific things every week that I'll just jot on here so I treat it as kind of a template. I have some things that happen every week the same like laundry every Monday, try to do the cleaning on Tuesday, those kind of things. But there's a lot of blank space for me to just write in what I want to do. So when I need to make a big batch of something like sauerkraut, I'll write that in there. I usually do that once or twice a year. And then things that I make more often like beet kvass, I'll jot in there. Is I'll think, okay, did we just start a new jar of that? Should I get another one going? I'll write that into like my could do option if it's something that doesn't need to happen today. Or I'll just schedule it in on a specific day if I need to make sure that that beet kvass happens. So I use it as like a loose template, write everything in there as I have it and I just love how it gets stuff out of my mind so I don't have to try to keep track of it myself and um, just makes it easier to make sure things happen as they should. Another thing that I love to use is time blocking. And if you're not familiar with this, it's basically where you think about your day and you divide it up into several chunks. So for example, I have a morning time block, a early afternoon time block, a later uh, afternoon slash early evening type of a time block and then an evening time block. So I have specific types of things that happen every single day in those similar time blocks every day. So it makes it really easy when I go to my list when I see the things that I have to do, I already know what time of day those are going. So like morning time is all about breakfast, getting kids ready for the day, things that'll happen in the kitchen, starting something for dinner if it's gonna be a long cook time, straining my kefir grains, starting any small ferment items that I need to get going, feeding the sourdough starter, that kind of thing happens in that morning time block. So I just know kitchen things, kid things, uh, that's when I'll work on getting the laundry washed if it's the day for that. That's when I'll stick my cleaning items in. Things that I can easily do with kids around. It doesn't need to be quiet. Those kind of things I know will always happen in that time block. And then early afternoon is when I do things that need more concentration and quiet. So that's when my youngest takes a nap and then the older kids when they're home uh, my next oldest, he's always home, so he'll be here. It's like a quiet time for him. Uh, whatever kids are home, same kind of thing. It's a quiet time for them, and that's when I know I can do my computer work, or like today, that's the time block that I'm filming a video in, and that's when I get my business things done that I need to do. It's when I work on anything that just needs quiet, concentration, time for that. And then the next time block is that later afternoon to early evening. That's when kids come home from school. I work with them on anything that they need to do. We'll have some outdoor time, music practice. We'll do dinner prep. We'll finish the dinner prep. We will have dinner. We'll clean up from dinner. We'll do uh, reading to the kids, time spent with them with different things. If it's more of a weekend or relaxed time, then we'll maybe play games together. We'll do things together as a family like that. And then it's the kids' bedtime, so baths for them. Uh, reading books to them, all that kind of stuff. And then after that is an evening block where if there's still leftover stuff that I need to get done that, that needs more quiet and concentration, I will do it in that time. I don't always do that. I try to use it more for like more of a relaxed time, reading something fun, you know, time with my husband, things like that. And then that's the last block of the day, go to bed and then repeat the next day. So I really like having everything in those main four blocks so then that way I just see the different tasks I think okay when is that gonna happen and then also when I have things like appointments I try to make sure to schedule them for like that morning time block or maybe that later afternoon time block so that I already know it's not interrupting like nap time or my quiet time to work on things and stuff like that so it just makes it really easy to think about where stuff fits it's really helpful for my kids to have a predictable routine for how the day will flow and they just know what types of things are gonna happen when. So I love time blocking, I'm a huge fan. 
So I hope that you guys found that interesting. Thank you always for your video ideas. Definitely keep those video ideas coming. I love to hear what you guys wanna see. If you have scheduling, uh, time management kind of tips that you love, I would love to hear what's working well for you. So leave me a comment and let me know what you like to do. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.